New research by the University of New South Wales suggests non-professional sports players who have suffered sports-related concussions earlier in life are not at risk of brain damage in the future. It also found players in contact sports perform better cognitively than an ordinary person. Joining us live with more on this is lead researcher at the University of New South Wales Centre for Health, Brain, Ageing, Dr Matthew Lennon. Thank you for joining us, Dr Lennon. Were you surprised by these findings? Just tell us a bit more about the study. Yeah, certainly. So this is the largest study done to date, looking at sports-related concussions. And we had over 15,000 people between the ages of 50 and 90, and they're all based in the UK. Whereas most of the research has focused on professional sports people, these were community-dwelling individuals. And essentially what we found is that if you had a sports-related concussion at some point in your life, you actually had better working memory and better verbal reasoning than people who'd never been concussed in the past. And we think that that doesn't relate to the concussion itself, but more from the benefits of being involved in sport at some point in your life. Okay, so what should be the takeout then, particularly for parents who have perhaps mm. been uh, avoiding sending their kids off to play AFL or, or rugby because of the contact nature of those sports? What mm. do you think they should be taking out of this in terms of a message? Uh, I think probably the first message is that being physically active and socially integrated, which is what so sports do for you, is really good for you. And for some people, that's going to be non-contact sports. So that's going to be things like tennis or netball. But for other people, the sports that they're drawn to are going to be those more physically intense active sports. And if that's the sport that suits your child or you as a you know, 20, 30, 40 year old, then that's, that's right for you. Um, we would say that a lot of the fear and a lot of the worry that has been generated around long-term cognitive consequences of concussion has been generated from research on professional, particularly American football players and also, you know, professional football players of other codes. And most of that is not translatable to your 15 or 16 year old or even you as a 20 or 30 year old because you're not playing with that intensity, that velocity, you're not having that frequency of concussions or the frequency of impact that you have when you're playing the professional game. So when we look at frequency for viewers, perhaps thinking back to their days on the field and, and worrying mm. about their own brain health decades on, how many concussions is, is too many? At what point is it worth investigating whether you've got these sorts of problems that we've heard around, around, around CTE, for example? Yeah, look, so what our current study showed is that even if you had three or more study, three or more um, concussions from sport, you, didn't, you weren't at increased risk of cognitive impairment in any domain that we looked at. Um, what our previous research has found is that if you've had three of any kind of concussions, so that could be concussion from sport or from being assaulted, then uh, you were at some increased risk of has, having worse attention and worse working memory. So I think just on a kind of a rational basis, if you're someone who's been concussed four or five times playing a sport, it probably is time to think about what you're doing and whether or not you can engage in physical activity in, in a way that's less risky. But if you've had one or two, it's not as concerning really um, based on what our, our research has shown today. I know that concussion guidelines in sport have changed a lot in recent years. Mm. Do you think we now have the recommendations right in terms of trying to optimise brain health after a concussion? Being in the, the space that you're in, do you have any tips for people who are worried about this? Do helmets work? Are there ways that you yeah. would suggest it could be made safer? Yeah, so the 2022 International Consensus Guideline from the Concussion and Sport Group is really comprehensive and really quite excellent. And, and they, they basically said in their report that the long-term cognitive outcomes of non-professional sport, there was very little data out there on it, and the data that was out there didn't find that there were you know, adverse cognitive consequences in the long term. In terms of your other questions about what can be done and what, what is recommended by those expert guidelines, it is limited. And when there's been a number of different studies and systematic reviews looking at what the effect of headgear is in football codes, the effect is small if there at all. And so there, there's some thought that perhaps if people do wear headgear, they compensate in other ways and that they engage in more risk-taking behaviours and they're, they're going to be concussed just as frequently as, and as badly as otherwise. What they did find in those guidelines and in the other systematic reviews is that if you're playing some sports like ice hockey, wearing a mouth guard is actually protective for concussions. So 
Wearing a mouth guard, the, the other really good intervention that they showed that at the start of training, pr reduced risk of concussion is strengthening and training. So people who engage in that strengthening, training, stretching, all those body conditioning exercises seem to have lower risk of concussion throughout the season. Dr. Matthew Lennon, fascinating to hear your insights. Thank you for sharing those results with us. Thank you so much for having me.